So I just finished up a month of opening up the door to all of you for relationship readings. And I put those off for a while. Um, you know, I wasn't really open to doing them because of the fact that I felt like people were not uh, focusing enough on doing their part in relationships and how I saw that that some people were just wanting to look at their relationship charts and bypass their their role in a relationship essentially how um, you know maybe they didn't want to work on themselves they just wanted to look at the the relationship chart and you know shift focus and how that to me felt wrong well things in me started to shift where I felt open to to doing the relationship chart readings and felt that it could be beneficial um, and a lot of that has had to do with my experience my personal experience and my relational experience in my life and how I have come to see that, of course, that is not the case for everyone, you know, what I shared about shifting the focus away from um, from yourself, doing any individual work, of course, that's not the, the case for everyone. Um, and how beneficial and how healing the container of a relationship can be. So the relationship readings have been fantastic. They've been incredible to do with those of you that I got to work with. Uh, in, in October when I had that little sale and so I'm leaving the relationship readings up and available um, long term because of how impactful they have been and because of how I have learned in my personal life that a relationship is you know I, I'm still living the experiment I'm still open to to what truths may come but a relationship is possibly the greatest catalyst for your healing and your growth and your self-improvement instead of just focusing on yourself you know I think it's it's definitely both it's not this is not black and white however I have uh, come to grow and learn and expand more in relationship I think than any other thing you know than on my own um, and not all of us are called to be in relationships some of us are meant to do our healing and growing as individuals, as single people, you know? I'm not just talking about romantic relationships. Um, but I think the majority of us are called to be better, to grow, to straighten up, to learn, whatever, in the container of a relationship, whatever that relationship looks like, you know, whether it's with a child or with a lover, right? Um, so anyway, what I wanted to share on top of all of that is that um, some of us have certain relational experiences and archetypes that we're living in life. And for me, um, so I, in my human design chart, I have a, a three in my profile. I'm a three five. And for those of us with threes in our profiles, we are more than average, typically more than average designed to really be bumping into things relationally. Relationships tend to be a little bit messier, a little bit harder, um, because we come in to life and to relationships, to our relationships, with this theme of being this scientist. And so we bump up against things. We do these experiments. We come in with these ideas of how to do things, what things we think are right, things we want to try, the way that we know something we want to do in a relationship. And then we find out that it doesn't work. We find out that that something we were doing, something we were saying, a person we were being, a method, whatever we had, wasn't working. So there's a lot of trial and error. And, um, and so that's, you know, you kind of live out this experience of being the scientist, doing this trial and error, finding things that don't actually work. And there are bonds made and bonds broken in the theme of the three. So if you've got a three in your profile, this is probably something you can relate to a little more than the average person. And, um, and there can be a lot of difficulty and, and pain in that. And so I just want to acknowledge that as well. It, um, these, these trials and these errors, uh, there's a lot of, uh, 
wisdom that can come from it, but it comes hard won. So, um, I wanted to share something that I learned the hard way, something not to do. I thought I would share with you from my experience something that does not work in a relationship. And uh, something that I think ultimately led to um, the end of, of one of my relationships. Um, not not the only thing, but was, was a major player. And it was that I did not expect my partner to change. And now, you know, we're going to get into some language here and, and, you know, oftentimes we hear, don't expect your partner to change. Um, and expectation, sure, okay, maybe don't expect that your partner um, become and, and, you know, morph into this thing that you were um, projecting that they be when you entered the relationship. You know, that's not what I'm meaning. What I mean is that I never even asked my partner to improve. I never gave my partner the opportunity to see something that was maybe a weakness or a hole or a lack or a sin or a shadow, you know, whatever you want to say, but say whatever you want to call it. I never even gave <laughs> that hawk just flew right over me as I was speaking. <laughs> kind of taken aback by that. I never even gave my partner the opportunity to to look at those things that were very difficult for me and so what I did instead was try to change myself so much that that wouldn't hurt me. That whatever that thing was wasn't a problem for me, that it didn't that it didn't affect me emotionally. And so I tried to become even more individualistic. That's what all this was, was rooted in, just this feeling of individualism that, you know, I, I should not be dependent on my partner. I should not have to ask for their growth, for them to see anything about themselves that might not be great. <laughs> you know, we all have these, these pain points and we all have these wounds and we all have these maladaptive tendencies we all have shadows we all have sin and I didn't point out any of it you know I just didn't I didn't bring it up in this way where where it could have been an opportunity for that person to grow to improve to see me to understand to me to give me more that some something that would feed me and it and so it was rooted in that feeling of like oh well I should just be able to do this myself I should just be able to handle this I should just be able to suck it up and allow this person to be this way and not call them out on it not point them point it out in them and I should just be okay with it and change myself so much that it's not a problem and this really is a flaw in thinking. It is a flaw in relating. Because you are being too hyper-independent if you are doing this. This is me talking to past me. You are being too hyper-independent in doing that. You are seeing, um, you know, your, your relationship as something that is... Um, well, really, it's like you are you are ruining an, an opportunity. You are missing an opportunity for true relating, for true intimacy. When you bring up something that, that needs to be brought up, that needs to be pointed out in this person, that, you know, something you're feeling, you are bringing something up to the surface that needs to be seen. You are creating an opportunity for intimacy. You're allowing this person to to see you, to grow, to give to you more. And that truly is what relationships are about. We heal with one another. We heal in containers of relationships. We, um, we are relational human beings. We are meant to attach to one another. We are meant to challenge one another. We are meant to support one another and hold one another up. And if you do not give people the opportunity to do that, then they won't. They will not do those things that you need. And you are also doing a disservice to them in that you are not 
pointing out where they could be growing for themselves, where they could be doing better for themselves, not just doing better for you and doing better for the relationship, but where they could be doing better for themselves, where they might be lying to themselves, where they might be too fearful, where they might be stuck in some mentality. And these are some of the greatest gifts that I have been given in relationship. When people told me these sorts of things, right? It, it, it wakes you up a little bit. It gives you an opportunity to, to see your person, this person that you're relating to better. It's, it's an opportunity for greater intimacy for, you know, working on something that maybe you didn't see or something that you were in denial about. And I remember um, my first serious boyfriend saying to me, you're trying to change me. And if I speak specifically about romantic relationships for a moment, um, I think a lot of men can struggle with that. You know, don't, don't change me. However, we are supposed to change one another in relationship. And I believe that strongly. I strongly believe that. That we are supposed to change one another a little bit. Not that we are supposed to, um, to disappear, you know, that we're supposed to morph into this, this person or, you know, whatever, all of these things that we fear, we fear losing ourselves. We fear, um, you know, m misery and, and truly we are supposed to learn about things like service and learn about things like unconditional love and learn about things like sacrifice and um, and and true love true alignment to love in relationship and so you are supposed to ask your people in love and for the sake of love to be better to change to grow to see something to see you to to relate differently, to show up differently, to do something better for themselves, whatever it may be. You really are supposed to ask. You really are supposed to, in love and through love, change people. Help them to change. I really believe that. I firmly believe that. That in relationships, this is what we are doing. We are making ourselves better. We are making other people better. And so this is something that I really, really got wrong and have been working on. <laughs> you know, it's, it's all a learning process um, with the three for sure. Lots of mistakes, I have lots more, lots more <laughs> stories of flaws, my relational mistakes and flaws that I could tell you about. But, but this is something that I see as as being like the true spiritual purpose of a relationship. It's healing and it's personal growth and, and development and, um, and it's alignment with love. It's, it's alignment with, with source and true love and God, you know, whatever it is for you. So that's just what I wanted to share today one lived and learned lesson about what not to do um, you know don't don't be hyper individualistic and stay in fear about those things and never never bring up things that could benefit you or benefit the other or benefit the relationship those things are not to be avoided and there is supposed to be a, a give and take in relationships. Um, there really is. And, and that is a way to be of service. So that's just one, one lesson I thought I could share today. Um, thank you for all of you who have been a part of uh, the relationship readings so far, who, who have trusted me with with sharing that information with you and seeing you all in that way is a real gift and a real, a real joy. And I look forward to continuing to 
to keep this door open so that we can have these conversations to talk about relationships, to talk about who we are as, as individuals, but who we are with our people. So thanks so much. Um, if you are interested in booking a relationship reading or just an individual chart reading, you can go to my website. They are all available there at CameronCoots.com. Thanks so much.